Speaking of the Playboy universe, mm -hmm. it's crazy that we had this happen on the same day. We are so excited to huh. welcome our next guest, Holly Madison. Mm -hmm. She's a pop culture icon, two-time New York Times best-selling author as it, well. Yep, her 2015 and 2017 memoirs detail her time living in the Playboy Mansion and reclaiming her life afterward. More recently, she's been making a splash in the true crime genre. So last year, her series, The Playboy Murders, debuted on Investigation Discovery. Now her new series, Lethally Blonde, premieres a week from today. Huh. I had an OnlyFans page for a couple years. I think one of the things about OnlyFans that appeals to a lot of people is that you're doing it independently. You can do it your way. My OnlyFans page was not nude. It was just bikini and lingerie photos. But in the interactions and the DMs, you would always get those regular fans who start saying, well, why don't you do this in the photos? Or why don't you do that? I wasn't gonna go there, but I can imagine how if you feel like you need the money, there could be that pressure to push that boundary. Huh, mm. juicy. Yeah, it is. All right, so Holly Madison is the show's executive producer. She also hosts it. And lucky for us, she's joining us this morning in studio. So hello and welcome to Holly Woo! Madison. Hey, hey. Thank you for being here. So nice to meet you. You look amazing. It's okay. No, great to have you. Love it. Thanks. So, the 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 transition from where we all know you from to true crime. Why? How? Well, it's pretty seamless actually because the first series I worked on was called The Playboy Murders, and my agent was telling me that a production company was interested in me, kind of hosting the show and executive producing. And at first I was like, no, I can't do another Playboy thing. Like I'm up to my ears in it, no yeah. way. But then he's like, okay, well look at this deck. I'm going to send over the cases they want to do. And I was surprised because there were so many cases I hadn't even heard of, and I thought I knew everything about really? you know that world. And I thought these cases needed some attention. And I thought this was a show I would really want to watch myself. I mean, so. I've always been a true crime junkie. Mm -hmm. Have you always been? Yeah, I've always liked it. Ever since I was a little kid watching Unsolved Mysteries. Oh that was God. one of my favorite shows. I know, right? All right, so here we go. You have the one show under your belt, mm -hmm. Lethally Blonde, we said a week from today. Yes. What are we? What can we expect from this, from this go around? A Lethally Blonde, the first season is six episodes. It's six incredibly different cases, but they all involve people who are involved in a really interesting world, whether it's an OnlyFans model or somebody in the adult industry. So you get a look into these different sorts of lifestyles and all the intrigue involved in that, and of course mm. the cases themselves. Yeah, I mean, you are one heck of a busy lady yeah. because you also have mm -hmm. a podcast. Yes. Girls Next Level? Tell yeah. us about that. My podcast, Girls Next Level, is with my co-host, Bridget Marcourt, who's Love on Girls her, Next yeah. Doors with me. And we just watch the episodes and talk about everything we see, what went on behind the scenes, how things have changed. Mm -hmm. Now, is it difficult for you to go back and rewatch? We have so many reality television mm -hmm. people here, and they're like, it's just such a raw, cathartic thing. Because a lot of them do podcasts. It's not yeah. abnormal. Um, to, to kind of go back and have to relive all of that. What goes through your mind when all that's happening? Well, it's fun to be able to clarify and talk about what you were really going through and what mm. really went on. But sometimes me or Bridget, we will get triggered by random mm. things that we're not expecting. So it's kind of like having a therapy session in front of like a million listeners. Oh <laughs> Is it hard though sometimes? Some of the things that you come across again in your mind? Sometimes, but mostly it's fun. Like we do talk about a lot of really fun things as well. And you know, we can look back and laugh at a lot of the stuff. And obviously, you know, I'm doing this podcast with my best friend, so that's super fun. So mostly yeah. it's great. Every once in a while we'll get triggered, but, you know, <laughs> it is what it is. And then you're kind of sticking with, like, kind of that world with your shows. And I'm thinking mm -hmm. about it now. Obviously, you're reliving it for that. But then it must feel so good and so rewarding for you to host these two shows, Now Lethally Blonde, coming up because you live that life to some degree. And to see all these injustices and bring light and kind of lend a helping hand on that front? I mean, was is there like a reward for you in doing this? Absolutely, some of these cases are still unsolved, so if putting the cases out there more can help find any kind of answers for the people involved, that would be amazing. But also I like to look at some of the victims and people involved and try to paint a bigger picture of who they were rather than just the one thing about them that catches the headline, like, oh, maybe yeah. they were in Playboy once or maybe yep. they did that. So 
I like to capture that, and I think the team ID does a really great job telling those stories. Well, yeah, so you've landed in a good it. spot. Yeah. yeah, and talk about painting a picture of who people are as a whole. You recently revealed something that was very surprising to a lot of folks, that you have autism. Yeah, it wasn't something I realized. I mean, it all makes sense looking back, looking back on my childhood and how everything was, but it was something my mom kind of brought to my attention that she had always suspected a few years ago. Really? Yeah, and I looked at the symptoms and I thought that really resonated with me. So last summer, I saw a therapist and I got an official diagnosis. And it's just been so helpful wow. to me, you know, to know how I operate. And, you know, I'm really glad I did it. But as a child, though, what were those signs that your mom said? The very first one she noticed is as a toddler, I would spend a ton of time just zoning out. Like, my eyes would just lock somewhere else, and I would zone out, and she never knew what that was. Nobody really had any answers for her. Friends would ask her, what is she doing? She's like, I don't know. I think she's just thinking. So that was kind of the first thing. I think another big symptom for me was just difficulty reading social situations and social cues. I had to put a lot more effort into that, I think, than most people. But Wow. So the decision then to, because you found out last year and you almost, mm -hmm. it feels like to me, immediately shared this with the public. Mm -hmm. um, what, 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 what went into that decision behind kind of opening up? I remember this. I was in an interview once and we were talking about something and I was trying to explain kind of the logic behind a decision I made and I thought that being on the spectrum kind of played into that a little bit because I didn't really know what I was dealing with myself. and. You know, it kind of landed me in a weird decision-making area. So I was talking about it a little bit, but I was like, you know what, if I'm going to talk about this, I need to really go get a formal diagnosis so I can speak intelligently about it. Yeah, so after that happened, though, how do you move forward with, knowing, with that diagnosis and just in your everyday life? I feel like it helps me so much just knowing how I operate and being able to tell other people why I do the things I do. I think it helps other people understand me better. I mean, I'm lucky because I am highly functioning. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people on the autism spectrum yeah. who have a much more difficult time. And obviously, I've been dealing with this for 40 plus years. So it's not a huge difference, but it makes me feel a lot better. And it helps me to be able to understand it and talk about it. I think it's going to be interesting. I feel like you have a new perspective of how you move going forward in all your business endeavors. And so we have the new show coming out. Do you think that, that you found your niche with the true crime? Are you going to stick with that? Is there anything else that you can share with us that you're working on, perhaps? I would love to continue doing the true crime. Okay. I love telling these stories, yeah, and working with the team I work with. I think they're amazing. Mm. All right, wonderful. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks for coming on. I mean, Thank I'm you. sure people are more excited to see what's happening next with you. I mean, you are, you, you've surprised so many folks. And to be able to turn things around and have, a, like, people look at you in a different light in so many different aspects of life, it's wonderful. Thanks yeah, it's for exciting. With us. Thank you. All right, and as we mentioned, Lethally Blonde premieres a week from today on Investigation Discovery. Holly Madison, thank you so much. Thank you. Great to meet you. You too.